Hamilton, uh, Pilgrim's Market here. Um, Kim, uh, this evening, um, Kim Rosebro is going to be speaking, as you know, about the dangers of genetically modified foods and what we can do about them. Um, just real briefly, um, a history of Ken. He is the editor and the publisher of the non-GMO, organic and non-GMO report since, is it 2001? Yeah, since 2001. So he's really had his hands in this issue uh, for a number of years. And um, I'm very, very excited to hear about the, the recent developments that uh, he's going to be sharing with us. He's also authored a couple other books. Um, that he has here uh, this evening. If you're interested in them, he has them over here, and uh, he'd be happy to uh, sign them for you at, uh, at the end of the talk. And really, that's probably uh, about it uh, for me. If you would just uh, join me in giving uh, Ken a very warm welcome. Thank you, Joe. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And welcome to my presentation. I want to thank Joe for inviting me to come and speak in beautiful Coeur d'Alene. And after my talk, I'm looking forward to seeing some more of the area, this beautiful area. I came up from Eugene, Oregon. So, um, yeah, I just want to, uh, in my talk tonight, I want to give you an overview, talk about genetically modified engineered foods and the threats they pose to human health and the environment, and also what we can do uh, to avoid them and to get them off of our dinner plates. First, I want to, uh, I had, had uh, the opportunity, I was able to get inside access to uh, Monsanto Laboratory. I was able to see a Monsanto scientist in action. <laughs> <laughs> Here we see he's very happy. There's, uh, got there's splendid news from the FDA, my pretties. So, I'd like to interject a little humor into this topic because it's, it can be a very heavy, heavy topic. I've been covering this issue for about 10 years. It's good to have a little humor to lighten things up every now and then. How many people know what genetically modified foods are? Okay. A little less than half of what's left. Well, genetically modified foods are uh, scientists in the laboratory have, have uh, developed food crops and they've done it in such a way that they're, they're taking genes from different species, such as bacteria, animals, and they're taking those genes and inserting them into the DNA of food plants. For example, scientists at Monsanto Company took genes from a bacteria. They found this bacteria that was literally eating Roundup herbicide for lunch, basically. They found this bacteria that was thriving on Roundup, Monsanto's Roundup herbicide. And they took genes from this bacteria and inserted it into a soybean plant. And the purpose was to make the soybean resist or to, be, to tolerate Monsanto's Roundup herbicide. So what they, what they did was created the soybean that farmers could plant and grow and that a farmer could spray their fields with Roundup herbicide and the plant would be able to tolerate and survive sprays of the herbicide, and the herbicide would do what it does and kill the weeds, but the, the soybean plants would survive. Right now, there are two basic types of genetically modified crops. There's herbicide tolerant, which I mentioned earlier, Monsanto's Roundup Ready soybeans. Um, it's called Roundup Ready because the plants are ready to be sprayed with Roundup herbicide. So there's Roundup Ready soybeans, Roundup corn, Roundup Ready corn, cotton, canola, more recently sugar beets. So Monsanto is a whole line of their Roundup Ready crops in the fields and under development. It's great for Monsanto because they can sell the seed and also sell the herbicide in conjunction with it. The other type of genetically modified crop that's available is, is in, it's called insect resistant. And with this, scientists took genes from a bacteria 
called Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a Bt bacteria that's lethal to insects. So they took genes from this bacteria, inserted it into the DNA of corn plants, corn and cotton plants, so that the, the plant becomes basically a pesticide factory. So that a pest, such as a corn borer or a corn rootworm, would chew on the plant, any part of the plant, and would kill it. 91% of the soybeans grown in the U.S. are genetically modified. It's Monsanto's Roundup Ready soybeans. 85% of the corn, 88% of the cotton. There's also canola, some papaya, 50% of the papaya that's grown in Hawaii is genetically engineered. And there's also some zucchini and yellow swap. So in total, we have, we have about 150 million acres of genetically modified crops grown in the United States. We, and we lead the world. We, we produce more genetically modified crops here in the United States than any other country in the world. So that <laughs> gives you an overview of what's happening with genetically modified crops that are being grown. So the question is, are you eating genetically modified foods? And the reality is that 70 to 80 percent of the processed foods on supermarket shelves contain ingredients from genetically modified corn, soybeans, canola, and now more recently sugar beets. Unfortunately, most Americans are unaware that they're eating these foods containing genetically engineered ingredients. So as a result of the concerns over the safety of genetically modified crops, food crops, Europe, six European countries have banned this GM corn uh, from Monsanto. It's called Mon18. It's this insect-resistant corn. Uh, most recently, Germany, which is huge. Germany is the largest European country. And the fact that they have banned these corn is very... So here in the U.S., there's no labeling. <laughs> it's none of your business. So we're basically, we are eating in the dark here in the U.S. with regard to GM foods, which is kind of ironic because we're considered the beacon of democracy, but we don't give our, our citizens the right to know if they're eating genetically modified foods. And there are reasons for that. The FDA says no label. The FDA's policy is that genetically modified foods are substantially equivalent to conventional and it's interesting because biotechnology companies have patented seed. They say their seed is unique and should be patented. But when it becomes a food, it's substantially equivalent. So the biotechnology industry likes to have it both ways. Uh, one of the other challenges with uh, genetically modified crops is that they're contaminating organic crops and foods. Uh, processed organic foods allow 5% non-organic ingredients, and they should be non-GMO, but unfortunately, <coughs> there's, GMOs are so prevalent and so many ingredients are made from GMOs that they're finding, some of them are finding their way into organics. For example, lecithin, soy lecithin, which is used in a lot of chocolates, uh, corn starch, uh, vitamin E is made from soy, so some of these um, ingredients are getting into organic foods. 